Hey friends, David Watts here. Another Luminar 2018 video. This is a bit of a continuation from the previous video where we showed RAW and JPEG files and compared them a bit and looked at some of the ways to improve the RAW files especially. And this is the same resulting image. We're basically picking up where we left off. So with that said, we'll jump into it. But let me quickly say thanks for so many of you that have uh, followed us, uh, that have liked the videos. If you can, uh, you know, continue to appreciate the videos, always appreciate a thumbs up and uh, encourage you to subscribe if you would. Uh, we appreciate that. and That helps us uh, with what we're trying to do here. And that is just spread the good word and uh, share some ideas for photo editing. Always love to hear from you. Also, if you've got tips and tricks you want to share. If you've got special requests, just um, put a note in the comments and um, I'll try to uh, try to incorporate all that. So thanks much. Let's jump into it. So this is the image uh, top of the rock, New York City, looking to the south. That's the Empire State Building here on the left, of course. Times Square over in this corner with some of those buildings. I want to show you four filters that I think will really be powerful filters for you. And depending on your taste and what you're trying to achieve with your image, uh, can do some great things for you. So without further ado, let's jump right to it. So we'll click Add Filters, and most of these will be in the Creative section. I think three of the four in the Creative section. Let's start with Dramatic, and we'll put this um, right after, you know, the only other filter I've got in here right now is Raw Develop, and we'll, um, we'll then bring in the, the Dramatic filter. And just want you to see what this will do for us. If we just click about halfway, you can see right away it gives a real sort of edgy, a little bit grainy because it's trying to draw out more details and uh, it's going to add to some noise a bit. So with all these, you're going to want to use some noise uh, reduction probably. Uh, this image was taken at ISO, ISO 3200, so uh, if we're pushing it too much, we'll get some noise. But I'm not too worried about the noise right now. I just want to show you the ideas, the concepts, and things you might try. So again, I typically start with about halfway and then I might check and go back to 25% and just see, you know, what I'm keeping, what I'm throwing away at this lower level. And typically I find it's somewhere in the halfway mark that fits the, the quality I'm looking for. Now with just that alone, if we turn the filter off, you can see how it was before. And with it back on, you can see how it looks now just a little grittier. From here, you can do things like tweak the contrast a little bit further if you like. Again, this all depends on the style you're looking for. But I think there's room for this kind of look in this kind of image. This is probably not going to work for a portrait, but for this kind of urban city landscape kind of image, um, I think this has real potential. Again, you can do more things even with local contrast. Sometimes this can really help bring up the details um, by playing with local contrast. You'll also notice it probably boosts the noise a little bit too. But again, that's okay. We can address that a bit through noise reduction. See the previous video where we apply some of that. All right, so uh, as is always the case, you may want to apply these filters against that base layer, that image layer, or and we're going to get rid of this dramatic filter or you may want to add it to its own layer. Add a new adjustment layer. Now we're up here and we're going to add this dramatic filter. And we can do the same basic thing, of course. But now you've got it in its own layer. One advantage of that is you can sort of name these, essentially. You can call this my dramatic adjustment. And that may help you a little bit keep track of all the things you're doing. The other thing you can do then is with the opacity slider, you know, if we take this all the way down, what we're saying is this new layer, this dramatic adjustment layer, is essentially totally clear. Everything from the underlying image layer is going to come through. If we're at 100%, then we're saying this dramatic image layer is, in fact, being seen at full force, so to speak. And what it does, though, is it gives us yet another dimension to tone it down a little bit, maybe... We, we've got it where we want it. We like the ratio of all these adjustments here, perhaps. And we just want to back it off a little without tweaking individual sliders, but by keeping the same ratio. And that's the beauty of the opacity adjustment and thus the beauty of adding 
uh, other filters as new layers. So I hope that helps a little bit. Anyway, that's filter number one, the dramatic filter. I'm going to get rid of the layer, and in so doing, I get rid of that filter. Now let's go and uh, look at another filter, and it will be the hue shift. This one's kind of wild, and I haven't really played with it a huge amount. I haven't used it in sort of a practical image just yet, but I just want you to see what it's there for and hoping it might spark some creativity. Uh, see what it does. There may be a place for it somewhere in your photographic work, uh, and it's quite interesting. I'll show you again two ways we go about it. First of all, we'll just have it here as a second filter. It's right behind or right underneath our raw develop filter. Hue shift. Now watch this. Let's drag this thing over here to the left. And we'll just stop there. It's quite amazing, I think, for a really wild sort of creative look. At least in this image, what it essentially did, it left the sky sort of as a gray washout. And then replaced every point of light coming out of these buildings with this fascinating purple kind of color. And we can go the whole spectrum, basically. And uh, there's more of a, a true purple. And here's more of a blue. So I think it's really fascinating what it does. Haven't found the exact place to use it yet, but I think it's quite interesting. Um, here's more of it at the other end of the spectrum, a little lighter blue. What I wanted to show you, though, was let's do the same thing. That's, by the way, that's the only slider on this. Let's do this. Let's remove it. We'll instead add it up here in an adjustment layer. All right, so there's hue shift again. Uh, we're up here in layer one. Let's just call this my hue adjustment. Okay, get rid of this filters catalog. Let's do something like this again, back where we were. Actually, I'm going to go for more of a blue. I want to show you one possibility, and that is, again, using the opacity. Now back this off just a bit. All right, so... Well, what's happening is if we go all the way back, of course, we're back to our original image look and feel. But if we go somewhere in between, we're essentially mixing that sort of wild blue into uh, the, the image we already have at a, about a 30% ratio, so to speak. What I'm saying is that you <laughs> certainly may not want the wild blue or purples or greens, but you may want to inject that color in just for the purpose of modifying your existing colors in an image. And that's kind of interesting. And that, that I think, is a, is a technique worth exploring more. Either way, kind of powerful. Haven't found the perfect use for it, but thought you'd like to know about it. So that's number two, the hue shift. All right, we're going to, again, again, get rid of that layer. Back to our original image. Here's number three, uh, image radiance. And uh, I'll show you, you know, I'll, I'll say the same thing. You could do this as a separate layer. That always adds a little bit more dimension for you to use the opacity adjustment. But let's do as we, we previously do. Let's go about halfway on this. And what I'd like you to see is, we'll, we'll emphasize this by turning the filter off. So here's the original image. And now here's the replacement. And so what I want to point out is this adds just a certain something of radiance. It kind of softens it a bit, just gives it a little bit of a glow. You'll have to decide how much is too much. Certainly if we if we come in this area, it's, it's, um, it's certainly much less sharp. It's just kind of a glowing, radiant feel. I would probably prefer it somewhere down in here. It may be useful to take a hard edge off your image. Now you may want a harder edge, like in our base image. You may want that for a purpose. Or you may want to try to create more of almost a sort of romantic radiance for a cityscape like this. Again, there's more sliders you can play with. Uh, smooth. Let's see if we can detect a, a real noticeable effect either direction. I, I think when we crank it up, it, it tends to remove some of that um, smoothness. And uh, when we put the smoothness back in, uh, or maybe I have it reversed. But anyway, you get the idea. Again, you can play with uh, brightness and shadows, as is somewhat common in all of these, uh, many of the sliders at least, as well as saturation and warmth. So this might be a place where you boost the warmth just a bit. And again, let's tweak these a bit more. 
And you'll just sort of get that glow sort of feel. I don't know how to quite put it in words, but I think there's something there that you might want to experiment with. So anyway, that's filter number three, image radiance. I haven't tried to use it on lots of different types of images yet, but on this kind of image, I could see the value. It's almost like there's a touch of fog without there being fog. There is a fog filter, but I haven't found a lot of usefulness in it just yet. But this one almost gives a little of that feel without something real obvious. Um, okay, so we're going to get rid of this filter now and go to our last uh, of the four filters I thought I would mention to you. This one is actually down in the utility section. It's top and bottom lighting. Typical when you have a, uh, a landscape uh, type scene. So imagine uh, a pasture and blue skies above and you've exposed for the scene, but basically the pastures exposed correctly, the skies are kind of washed out and white. And this would allow you to bring back some of the color from the skies, especially if you have a raw file, that's probably where you're gonna get the best results if you've, if you've lost some of the color in the sky. Let's try it a little different here though. First thing we need to do is set the orientation and um, it sort of defaults right there. And I'd say that's almost about right. Let's just put it about here though. Let's do this. Instead of sort of changing the top too much, let's change the bottom. What we've done in this is just added brightness to the bottom. And we might even tweak the, the top a little to, to make it just a bit darker. You click set orientation again to knock off the, the little guidelines there. And all of a sudden, pretty interesting effect. Again, here is the image before with no changes. And here's the image after we've gotten done with it. Now, it may impart a little bit of an HDR look and it may get a little bit fake looking. So you can again play with the extent to which you wanna really boost this. This would be a good one, I think, to create as its own layer. Let's do that one more time. We're down here to, uh, sorry, I passed it up. Uh, there we go, top and bottom lighting. And we'll set the orientation again. Put it right about there. This represents sort of the, the graduation zone, uh, the gradation from one from the top to the bottom. We will uh, boost the bottom a little bit. We might drop the top some. Okay. Uh, we'll click set orientation to, to knock that off. What we've essentially done, and I think it's most sort of clear to visualize here, we've messed with the ratio of the top lighting to the bottom lighting, right? We've, we've tweaked that, we've, we've boosted the bottom lighting, uh, the cityscape, and we've reduced the lighting up in the clouds. We've, we've changed the ratio. This, I think, is a great place where with the opacity slider, now that we've got the ratio the way we want it, and let's just pretend that, that the lighting up top is 20% and down below there's 80%. The opacity slider will let us preserve that balance, that ratio that we've worked out, and just sort of tone it down a bit, let more of the original image come through. So do you see what we did there? So we're about halfway down on the opacity slider. Essentially half the original image is shining through, and the adjustment layer is thus being watered down a bit, if you will. Uh, so again, try to visualize it here at this 50% level. Now it's back up to 100%. You see, it's more sort of that HDR feel, maybe a little bit fakey. When you bring it down here, it just has a bit more realism. But it's, it's a realism that's still been boosted a little bit over the original image. To, to verify that, turn off this layer. So there's the original layer, and there's our new layer. Do you see that distinction? I think that's key. One more time. So original layer. The bottom is kind of dark, naturally. It's a dark city, although there are lots of pinpoints of light. Now we put the layer back on, the layer that contains our top and bottom lighting. And it's like we boosted the lights just a bit. And the clouds made them a little darker. Now there are other tools and filters where you could bring the brightness up. or th Those would tend to be global in nature. Uh, you can boost the brights or bring the shadows down. Again, tend to be global unless you were to try to paint those in. But I think with this kind of approach, you're keeping the clouds dark, 
you're boosting the brightness of the city. You've changed the ratio of light in the image. And with the opacity filter, you've kept it kind of realistic. Anyway, that's the fourth. And that, those are the four I wanted to share with you. The fourth one being top and bottom lighting. So here it is real quick and recap. Uh, filter number one, the dramatic filter. Number two, the hue shift. Kind of wild results, but there's something there that's uh, got real potential. Play with it a little bit and tell me what you think. Number three, image radiance. Gives a nice kind of soft glow to your scene, at least a scene like this one. And fourth, top and bottom lighting. And, um, and those four filters be kind of fun to play with and hope that might help you explore a little bit more. That's my goal is to share a few tips and tricks. Hope you like it. Give us a subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Give us feedback, comments, suggestions, whatever. Tell us we're crazy. That's okay too. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So that's it for now. Hope you have a great day and we'll talk again soon. See ya.